Hi everyone, this is Karen from the Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. In this month's video, we're going to head down to Cheltenham, Montgomery County. As some of you may or may not have heard before, this area of the county was known for having uh, Camp William Penn in the Civil War. This camp was a training facility and in fact it was the very first training facility organized by the US government to train black troops. At that time they were called the United States Colored Troops. During the American Civil War black men were not uh, always allowed to join uh, the various troops uh, for the Union side of the Civil War and it wasn't until July 17th, 1862 that Congress actually formally passed a bill authorizing President Lincoln to essentially allow the United States uh, federal training facilities to allow uh, black men to enlist in the Union Army. Some states did allow uh, some men to join prior to this, but in many cases men who wanted to fight in the war were often turned away. Camp William Penn uh, was formally opened on July 4th, 1863, and it trained groups until August 3rd, 1865. They did like the general Cheltenham neighborhood because it was close to the city of Philadelphia, had access to railroads, and you had Lucretia Mott and a lot of other Quakers who were known to support abolition in that neighborhood. So ultimately, they ended up setting up the camp on Edward Davis's land. Uh, he was the son-in-law for Lucretia Mott. And the land was close enough to uh, Lucretia Mott's home, uh, known as Roadside, that she could actually see the parade grounds from some of her windows. Camp William Penn became the first and largest uh, training ground specifically funded by the U.S. government for the training exclusively for black troops in the Civil War. Once it was confirmed that Camp William Penn was going to be set up in Cheltenham, a lot of local organizations such as the Union League as well as local activists in the area uh, were raising money to finance the camp, and they were also going into the neighborhood to recruit uh, men to enlist in the Union Army. Unfortunately, even when the men enlisted into uh, the regiments at Camp William Penn, there was still a lot of racism they had to face. Uh, there were still a lot of people who didn't think that black men would be as good uh, as a soldier at, compared to their white counterparts. So there are several cases where you see some tension and sometimes even violence between the black soldiers and uh, the white citizens living uh, in Philadelphia and in the Cheltenham area. One such incident of some of the racial tensions uh, at Camp William Penn occurred on August 10th, 1863. There are a lot of stories about an interaction between a sentry of the camp, Charles Ridley, and a civilian, William Fox. Stories go that while on duty, uh, Ridley encountered Fox, who was along the fence, and Fox was harassing him. And Ridley ended up shooting Fox, and he later ended up passing away. 
This case ultimately went to the local courts and went all the way up to Harrisburg where uh, after uh, Lieutenant Wagner sided with Ridley, ultimately Governor Curtin pardoned Ridley. Abolition activists such as uh, Frederick Douglass did come to the camp to see the soldiers and even they noticed uh, that there were a lot of racial tensions both in and out of the camp and they did record seeing that the officers at the camp who were all white men they seem to be treating the soldiers more harshly than you may have seen them treating their white counterparts. The leaders and officers of Camp William Penn were exclusively white men. The head leader was Lieutenant Colonel Lewis Wagner, who had been severely injured in the second Bull Run battle on August 3rd, 1862. Uh, he eventually was released, saying he was unfit for active duty. And he actually volunteered to lead this camp. And there are many accounts of him siding with his soldiers when issues of racism evolved. Uh, you even see that when the soldiers were ready to be mustered out with their regiment, they would often... A parade through the local city, which was standard practice at that time. And at first, some of the regiments were not permitted to walk and parade on their way out towards the battlefield. And Wagner actually stepped in for some of the later groups and did get them the right to muster out and parade through the city. Once mustered out to the battlefield, the various soldiers of the 11 different regiments that trained at the camp saw action at a lot of major battles in the latter years of the American Civil War. Just shy of 11,000 troops were ultimately trained and mustered out at Camp William Penn. Of these soldiers, some of them did go on to earn the Medal of Honor. Two such cases were Thomas R. Hawkins, who was a private in the 6th uh, U.S. Infantry. Uh, he was given the Medal of Honor for rescuing his regimental colors. Another Medal of Honor recipient was Alexander Kelly of the U.S. 6th as well. He was a first sergeant. He received this medal for seizing the colors which had fallen near the enemy lines and raised them and rallied the men during a time of confusion and great danger in this battle. The 43rd uh, U.S. Colored Troops were there at the time of the Union Army pursuing Robert E. Lee after the Battle of Petersburg, and they were also present during the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9th in 1865. Members of the 22nd Colored Troops were also involved in going after Lincoln's assassins, Today, in 2022, unfortunately, there's not much left physically uh, to remind us of Camp William Penn. The majority of the grounds that house this camp or this training facility is now row homes. Uh, the only three visible signs of the camp are a state marker uh, made by the Pennsylvania State Historic Commission, uh, and this marker is located at Keenan Street and Cheltenham Avenue. Right next to the marker, you have the old gatehouse for the camp, which still stands, 
and you have the front gates for the camp. There's also a stone marker on the ground at, located at the corner of Willow and Sycamore Avenue uh, describing the camp that used to be there. Today, Historic Lamont actually has a seasonal museum uh, called Camp William Penn Museum, and that is located in the old gatehouse, which still stands today at 7322 Symour Avenue in the Lamont neighborhood of Sheltonham. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when a new video is released. The Historical Society of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania is a private nonprofit library and museum located in Norristown, Pennsylvania. With support from viewers like you, our members, and the community, we're able to continue making these videos so that history can be fun engaging and accessible to the community. Please consider donating by clicking on the link below, which will take you to our website. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.